All 16 words in today's list have been hand-selected to be the most useful words for you to know. So let's start with this word, beseech. To beseech someone for something is to beg urgently or anxiously, to implore them to do something. I beseech you for aid. Congress beseech the president to act. You're begging because something is urgent or you are worried or deeply concerned about something. This is far stronger than a word like ask. You are beseeching. His agent beseeched him to write while he was away. Beset. The definitions I want you to know are these two. Beset means troubled or harassed by something. For example, inflation besets the economy. Inflation troubles the economy, challenges it, harasses it, causes problems for it. But beset can also mean to be surrounded by something, hemmed in, given no space to act, to be set upon, assailed. The explorers were beset by wolves. In that context, it means they were surrounded by, not just troubled, they were actually surrounded by the wolves. So two ways to use the word beset here. Just in general, to be troubled by something, for something to cause a problem for something else. I'm beset by worries about my child. Or it can be literally to be surrounded by something. As in that sentence, the explorers were beset by wolves. Bibulous, a lovely fun word to throw in. Basically, someone who's a bit too keen on drinking, maybe wine or vodka or something, they might be a bit bibulous, a bit too fond of alcoholic beverages. I see this word quite a few times and I think most people probably don't know what it means, so I thought I'd add it to this list. Definitely could come up in the jury. Jean-Claude Juncker, the EU's bibulous president, as in he's quite fond of imbibing. It's another word you can learn. To imbibe means to drink. To be quite too keen on imbibing alcohol, you become bibulous. Very fun little word. Bilateral. I see this all the time. And again, I think people won't quite know the definition a lot of the times. So usually we're talking about meetings or agreements between two nations. Bi means two, lateral is side, so two sides, bilateral. And the most common context, as I said, is between two nations or huge organizations. For example, a bilateral trade agreement affecting reciprocally, equally, two nations or parties. But obviously there are other ways to use a word which means two sides. For example, in medicine, you might say, it wasn't just the right ankle, it was also the left ankle. Bilateral on both sides. But as I said, most commonly we're talking about between two nations, rather than unilateral, meaning one nation alone, or multilateral, many nations, many sides in the agreement, bilateral two sides. Blase, absolutely fantastic word. And I've got to explain it a little bit. So originally, blasé meant you'd had so much enjoyment and pleasure, you were almost bored by it. And that's where you get this main definition. Apathetic, having no feeling toward pleasure or excitement as a result of excessive indulgence or enjoyment. He had become blasé to the joys of fine dining. Didn't really enjoy it anymore, a bit lacking feeling because maybe he's habituated, a bit too used to it. Blasé. But the word has evolved slightly in modern parlance. We use it slightly differently now, for the most part. Now it doesn't just have to be that you're bored because you've enjoyed it too much. It can just mean you're unconcerned and emotionless in general, not just because you've indulged too much. So if someone is unconcerned and has no emotion, apathetic about something, you could say they're behaving in a blasé manner in an unconcerned manner. Or in this sentence, she was becoming quite blasé about the dangers of free climbing. Not specifically that she's not enjoying it anymore, although that's probably true, also just unconcerned maybe about the dangers, not really caring, not having any emotion. So again, primarily blasé is about indulging so much in something that you really don't get much pleasure anymore from it. 
But I want you to also know that you can use the word as in, don't be blasé about drink driving. It's not about over enjoying drink driving. It's about don't be emotionless about it. Don't be unconcerned about it. It's something to be concerned about. A wonderful word there to know, blasé, obviously pronounced in a slightly French way, not blaze, it's blasé. Blatant, of bad behaviour done openly and unashamedly, without shame. Flagrant, brazen, often used with the word disregard, but not always. He showed a blatant disregard for the safety of other drivers. The president was blatantly rigging the polls. Notice we are often talking about bad behaviour done openly, not any behaviour. So specifically when it's bad behaviour done without shame, without trying to hide it particularly, you would say it's blatant, open, flagrant. Bleak, cold, raw, lacking in warmth, life or kindliness, grim. Of course that can be literal, like a bleak landscape of a deserted beach, it's cold, lacking in warmth, or metaphorical, the bleak outlook for the future, cold, lacking in hope, grim. And this sentence displays both meanings. On a bleak November evening, really quite dark, lacking in sun, lacking in warmth, the CEO read the equally bleak quarterly forecasts, the projections for his company over the next three months. And they're not going to be cold, but they might well be grim, lacking in hope. So two nuances to the word bleak, both worth knowing. That brings us to blemish, to spoil by a flaw. Something was kind of perfect, and then it was blemished, spoiled by a flaw. She was frustrated that one employment gap blemished an otherwise flawless resume, marked it down, added a flaw to something that was otherwise quite nice, to spoil something to blemish. Usually the thing is quite small when you're talking about a blemish. We're not talking about devastation or decimation, just something that lets it down a bit. Her amazing makeup was blemished by a minor mark above her eyebrows. That kind of thing, to blemish. Blithe, a bit like blasé, it had an original meaning and now it's got a more modern meaning. So originally it meant light-hearted, happy-go-lucky, blithe, casual. But you can see how the word would have evolved to mean heedless, lacking thought consideration. And now that's the primary definition. So if you hear the word blithe, it's less likely that we're talking about someone being light-hearted and jolly. We're probably referring to them being heedless, reckless, lacking thought, lacking consideration. Blithe disregard, for example. Or in this sentence, Europeans are not quite so blithe, casual, about peace treaties, having seen the continent decimated twice in the past century by war. So it's a scathing word here, saying, don't be so blithe, don't be so casual, lacking thought about peace treaties. It's really important. As I say, usually blithe is now used in an insulting context to be thoughtless about something, blithe. Boisterous, noisily turbulent, rowdy, marked by expressive exuberance and high spirits. So yes, it's an insult. You're saying that people are rowdy, misbehaved, but you're saying it with a slight smile on your face. You're not castigating them. You're not denigrating them, saying they're awful. You're saying, oh guys, you're too noisy, too turbulent, too rude, loud exuberant, you're in joyous high spirits. It's a bit too much. A large and boisterous crowd attended the concert. Again, not criticizing the crowd, of course they're gonna be loud because it's a concert, but saying maybe a bit too far, getting a bit too rowdy, maybe a few fights breaking out, a bit too much drinking. They're being boisterous. Bombard, to attack, especially with artillery or bombers. That's the literal definition. Literally, you might have a bombard cannon, or the verb to bombard an enemy position with bombs. But, of course, it's used much more metaphorically these days. 
meaning to attack someone verbally, usually with lots of questions. They were bombarded by inquiries about their recent change in owner to be surrounded by questions that just don't stop. They were bombarded by questions. It doesn't have to be questions, as in this sentence. The website doesn't lecture visitors about personal responsibility or bombard them, assail them, attack them with data and links to vaccine appointment hubs. So original definition literally with bombs, bombard someone in medieval times with cannons, but now about being attacked or assailed metaphorically, usually with questions. Lovely word to know. Bountiful, equally lovely. Generous in bestowing gifts or favours, given or provided abundantly. That's the key synonym I want you to know, abundant. If something is bountiful, there's loads of it. It's abundantly supplied. As in, a bountiful supply of apples for the harvest festival. We've got enough so that everyone can have some. A tremendous bounty, treasure trove. Make something bountiful. Able to provide so many gifts, favours, abundantly. Even the word itself sounds almost joyous and generous, doesn't it? Bountiful. A bit like beautiful, maybe. Great word. Bodlerize. Now, this is a very advanced word, and you might ask, why did I include it? Because yes, it still could come up in the GRE or many other exams, but I'm seeing this word more and more often these days, and so few people know it. So why not give you guys an edge with a really fancy word? Basically, it means to purge something, to edit a text, usually a book, by removing the parts that are rude and vulgar. So you're modifying by editing, abridging, simplifying or distorting to remove what you don't like. In the original times, there was, I think, a person called Bodler where they were taking out all the rude bits from books, but now we can use it more broadly where you're editing the version of history maybe or editing a text, an article to make it more suitable to what you like, not necessarily just about removing the rudeness. This sentence comes from a recent article from the New York Times, I think. Congress and the president must counter the forces that seek to diminish, exploit, or bodlerize our understanding of this terrible un-American event. I think they're referring to the Capitol Hill riots where people stormed into the capital of the political establishment in America. And the sentence is saying some people, these forces, are trying to diminish, reduce, exploit to their own advantage, or bodlerize, edit the history, edit our understanding of this event. Maybe say, oh, it wasn't that violent, it wasn't that bad. They're editing history, omitting the bad bits, taking out the references to how violent it was, for example. They're bodlerizing it. And the article is calling for Congress and the president to counter that attempt. So it's not edited out of history. It's not bodlerized. Yes, a very advanced word, but one I'm seeing more and more often these days. Braggart, a nice easier word to look at here. A loud, arrogant boaster. I think you can all link that in your head to those events on Capitol Hill. But anyway, if someone is a braggart, they brag all the time. Essentially, that defines them. They are just a bragger. They're arrogant. He was a braggart who was always talking about how much money he made, boasting, saying how good he is, how brilliant and amazing he is and how he should be admired by everyone. He's a real braggart. Bravado. A very interesting word, a bit like blasé, an evolved meaning. So it can mean an aggressive display of boldness, very much like bravery. Audacity, boldness, bravado. And let's give you an example sentence of that. Executive chef Josh Capon has created a sophisticated seafood restaurant that relishes, enjoys his bravado, his bold dishes maybe. Aggressive audacity, bravery, bravado. But the word also has an equally common secondary meaning. 
It means when you're putting on the pretense, you're pretending bravery, which is a very interesting secondary definition, isn't it? So it depends on the context, which definition is being used. Are we praising that person, saying it was very impressive boldness and bravado? Or are we saying that person's kind of pretending to be brave, but actually they're not that brave? Maybe when someone in a pub or a bar says, I'll take you on in a fight, and they're hoping the other person doesn't go along with that and has a fight because they're kind of scared. So they're pretending to be brave, but they're actually scared. That would be bravado. And here's an example sentence of that. Still, through all the bravado, the imitation bravery, the vulnerability seeps through and breaks your heart. So is it aggressive and genuine or a facade, a pretense? The word can be used in both senses, which makes it amazing and lovely. Hard to learn, maybe, but that's what I'm here for. And brazen. We end with a word that links back to an earlier word in this list, blatant, where you're doing something in a shameless way that's disrespectful. It may have some bravado, some boldness, but it's impertinent, rude, shameless, disrespectful. So it's even harsher than blatant. Again, talking about bad behavior. We must acknowledge the difficulty police face in trying to contain brazen underage drinking. Shameless, where they're not even trying to hide it. It's blatant, it's brazen. And I hope I'm not too brazen in asking you to let me know if this video was helpful. Again, I handpicked these words because I really felt they'd be useful and interesting for you to learn. Have a great day.